In the name of Jesus, dear friends. Lent is a journey. Lent is a journey in many ways. We journey with our Lord to the cross. And we deal with the forgiveness of our sins. And sometimes it can be easy to make a journey like that as far as the journey goes. A trip down memory lane. A stroll through the story of Jesus' death. But Lent, Lent in the church really has two particular focuses. First, it is a time to reflect on Christ's passion and on his death. And second, the second purpose, that it is, Lent is a time of learning and spiritual renewal and revival through the study of God's word. Now in the, church, in the early church, it was during the Lenten season that those who were preparing to be baptized received their final instructions, their instructions in the faith before they would be baptized. So what we will be doing during this Lenten season is listening, is hearing, hearing and listening about Christ's passion, about his death, and about what this passion and death has to do with with who we are as Christians who need to confess our sins and receive holy absolution. So we look at Psalm 6 this evening. This is a psalm of David, belonging to a group of particular psalms that we call penitential psalms. The word penitence or penitential is related to another very Lutheran word, and that is the term repentance. Repentance. What is repentance? Repentance, then, is ultimately a gift from God. But we often think that repentance comes from within ourselves by our own power. But repentance, repentance is ultimately a gift from God because only God can actually turn the sinner's heart towards him. It is only God who can soften hearts to turn towards him. It reminds me of Luther's words about baptism in the small catechism, words that we have recited just a few moments ago. What does such baptizing with water indicate? And Luther writes, it indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sin and evil desires. And that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Now this process of contrition and repentance is not a one-time thing. In fact, this process of contrition and repentance is daily. So it's about law and gospel. It's about sin and forgiveness. And this is the cycle of the Christian life. This is why we continue to repent. This is why we continue to receive absolution. That is why we come to the Lord's Supper as we will this evening, week after week after week. It is about living. It is about breathing the Christian life, not simply knowing the right answers. And this is what God is going to teach us through these particular penitential psalms. So in Psalm 6, David begins by lamenting that it seems like God has abandoned him that seems that God has forsaken him. This is certainly the law when we feel that way. God is angry with David, and so David prays that God will have mercy on him because he is weak, because he is troubled. Do you ever feel that way? Where does this start for you? What does this tell you about our God? Well, it first of all tells us that God hates sin. Does that sound harsh? You bet it does. God's law is very harsh. 
And as the psalmist writes in Psalm 5, the psalm before Psalm 6, he says, you hate all evildoers. The law doesn't wink its eye at sin. You and I try to wink at sin. And in our society today, when we look out into the world, we see a lot of winking at sin today. Yes, our sin is bad. But let's just ignore it, we think. Let's just cover it up and forget about it. You know, this is like saying that my cancer isn't that bad. It's just on the top of my skin. You can't ignore it. You can't ignore sin. Sooner or later, sin will dig in and do its work of destruction, and it will destroy us. But let's now go to verse 2 of Psalm 6. David prays that the Lord will be gracious to him and heal him. And just like blind Bartimaeus or the Canaanite woman, David is not going to let God off the hook, just like God won't let David off the hook either. You see, David knows God's true character. David knows who God really is. He hates for a time, but loves for all eternity. Now, David's picture in Psalm 6 of the effect of sin is profound, and it is even painful. It's a picture that makes you squirm. At least it makes me squirm when I hear it. I don't like to talk about my sinfulness. I don't like to think about my sins. Oh, I would rather, much rather, think of myself as a basically nice person. I'm a Christian. And that means all of this talk about sin is for someone else. But remember... David was also a Christian. Oh, I know, he's in the Old Testament. But David grew up in a household that would look forward to the coming of the Messiah. So he believed in the coming Christ. Sin isn't just something that unbelievers have to deal with and have to address and face. I think, I think sometimes in the church we can get the mistaken idea that sin and forgiveness is for bad people. But that Christians, that's us, we just praise God because it's so great. Well, that's a false comparison, isn't it? The angels in heaven, the scriptures say, rejoice over one sinner who repents. And that means you and it means me. The angels rejoice when you repent. The angels rejoice when I repent. And when we look at this psalm, we see hope. That is the message of Psalm 6, hope. No matter how messed up our life has become, no matter how far down the path of sin that we have walked, no matter what nightmares seem to trouble us, no matter what pain that we have caused ourselves or others, you see, God is merciful, God is loving, God is compassionate, God is forgiving. Yes, he hates the sinner for breaking the law, but because of Jesus Christ, he loves the sinner even more. He loved us so much that his son Jesus came into our world took on human flesh and went to the cross and suffered and died for each one of us. God hates that sinner and he took all of that wrath out on the cross so he no longer shows his wrath upon us. God's unfailing love will put us back together when nothing else can. Only God can scatter your enemies. Sometimes when we hear the Psalms speak about our enemies, we think of people maybe who don't like us or that we're having trouble with. And yet when God speaks about scattering our enemies, we're thinking of sin and death and the devil. We call these enemies the unholy three, sin, death, and the devil. Those are our real enemies in this life. Only the mercy of God in Jesus Christ can turn our life around and remake us and renew us in the waters of holy baptism. Only God 
has given his son in that holy meal to feed us and to forgive us. And so this Lent, we are taking a journey together. We are taking a journey together to the cross of Jesus Christ. And on this journey, we are going to learn about God's mercy for lost sinners. Sinners like you. Sinners like me. And we are going to hear about God's gift of forgiveness because that's what it is, a gift that we don't deserve. He gives us that gift in our confession of our sins and through the proclamation of the absolution. For some of you, this actually will be a journey that you've taken before, maybe many times, that journey to the cross. But for some of us, this may be a new journey, or at least it may be a new path at this same journey. Confessing your sins, not generically, but specifically is a hard thing. You know, we confess our sins in the general confession. That's generically. We say, I am a sinner. I confess to you my sins. That's not always so hard to do when we do it generically. But it's even harder when we confess our sins specifically to our God. So hard, in fact, that many will never even try it. But I'm here today to hold up God's gift of forgiveness to each one of you and everything he has to give in his Son Jesus Christ. There is forgiveness. Whatever sin it is, confess it to the Lord. He is faithful and just to forgive your sins. And so we say with the psalm, the Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.